Welcome to the Strength for the Day podcast, which is a daily Bible study with Dennis Fountain. We hope this time together will be challenging, sharpening, uplifting, encouraging, and strengthening to your Christian walk. Thank you for joining us, and we pray you are helped through today's study. Hey, welcome back to Strength for the Day as we start really a new week of episodes. Of course, uh, if you're listening to these when they drop and when they come out, uh, this one will be, will be released today on Monday. And so I hope that our Strength for the Day uh, studies have been an encouragement and a challenge to you. Uh, I'm looking forward to this week. Uh, you pray for me. I'm out of town this week week, uh, actually at a meeting in California, and then I'll be back to our church on Sunday as we um, finish up our study in the book of Philemon, and then uh, then I'll be, in, I'll be in Florida for a meeting, and then I, f- I come back, and man, October, the, uh, the second, second week of October, October 6th, October 7th, uh, schedule settles, and I I can't tell you how how much I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's been a crazy busy season um, with pastoring and our art gallery, Hannah's art business, and my leadership business. And so, uh, anyway, I. All of that's extra this morning, all right? Not a part of strength of the day, but uh, we've got a lot going on. I'm excited for this week. I'm excited for our study. We are in the book of Joshua, and if you were with us in our last episode, uh, we talked about really the land that was going to be settled by the children of Israel and how God would uh, bring them into that land, Joshua chapter 13 to 19. And God knew the purposes and plans where he was sending people, and he knew the enemies they would face, just like the Lord knows your plan and my purpose each and every day. And God says that as we follow him, he'll bless and he'll direct our steps. And so we were challenged yesterday or in the last episode, whenever you listen to it, we were challenged to uh, daily choose to follow God and allow him to bless and work in our lives. I told you at the end of the last episode that tucked away in chapters 13 through 19 of the book of Joshua was Joshua chapter 14. And in there is a little synopsis of the story of a man by the name of Caleb. Now, here's what we need to know as we come to Joshua 14 today to grab this little nugget that's tucked away in uh, the dispersion of the land. Um, Caleb was one of two uh, that actually stood and said, God gave us the land to go into. Remember, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, Moses sent 12 spies to go into the land that was promised to them by God to spy out the land and then to come back and to convey to Moses and the people that uh, the land would be good and, hey, here's how we should get in. And kind of a, a reconnaissance mission is what these 12 had. So they went, they spied out the land, they came back. And the story tells us that 10 of those men said, there are giants in the land. Yes, it's amazing. Yes, we believe that God has given it to us, but there's giants. We're fearful. We don't know. We have doubts. But there were two that said, no, yes, there's giants. Yeah, it's not going to be easy, but God promised this land to us and we need to go. Those two men were Joshua and then the one we're going to read about today, which is Caleb. So go with me, if you would, to Joshua chapter 14. And uh, verse number six, all right, we're going to read just very quickly the story of Caleb here in Joshua 14. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. That word was that Joshua and Caleb would be the ones to see the promised land because they had faith in God. Verse 7, Caleb recounts his story. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly or completely followed God, the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. So Caleb recounted that story and he says, Now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years. So Caleb is 85 years old. 
Ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old, as yet uh, as yet, I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day, how Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be, uh, it may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenazite, to this day, because he wholly or completely followed the Lord of Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron for uh, formerly was Kirjath Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakims, or among Anakim. And then the land had rest from war. So here's Caleb coming to Joshua and saying, God promised us this land, and I, I want to capitalize on that promise. I know God keeps his promise. He gave it to this land to Moses, which said, this could be mine, so I want this land. Joshua, would you, as the leader... Would you allow me and my group to go and to conquer this land? And Joshua said, yes. So here's God once again fulfilling his promise. But what I would like us to take just a second to see <clears throat> is something that is highlighted as a, a testament or a defining um, character trait or uh, aspect of Caleb's life. Because in those verses, we read a statement a few times. That statement we found in verse number 9, uh, the fact that Caleb has wholly or completely followed the Lord. And then also in verse number 15, that God gave the land because Caleb wholly or completely followed the Lord. The idea behind completely following the Lord is there's no reserve there's nothing in my life that I'm holding back from God. Now, I, I do realize that we have had this application and this thought a number of times. For those of you that have been on our journey of strength for the day, um, you could go back and, and probably about once every two to three weeks, we find ourselves face to face with this challenge again. But here's why. That challenge is all throughout Scripture. You see, God is not just interested in partial surrender. God is not interested in leading simple, small parts of your life. God desires to lead all of your life and my life. And God says, listen, as you entrust me with everything and by faith follow me, I promise that I will work. I promise you can hold it to me that I will work in your life. But what is, the, uh, what is the cost that we pay for God to work in our life? Well, it's, it's not really a cost that we pay. It's just surrender. It's just us saying, God, I want to give you access to every area of my life. God, I'm not holding anything back. God, I believe you and I will follow you. When we look at the life of Caleb, and it says that Caleb wholly followed the Lord, the, the concept or the thought that is really being driven home is God had promised to the children of Israel, I will bring you into the promised land, and I will give you victory. The 10 spies that were with Caleb and Joshua, they said, no, we don't believe that God can. Caleb and Joshua wholly, completely followed the Lord. God, we will follow you. We believe that you can and that you are able. Here's my question for you today. Two simple thoughts or questions. Number one, um, and they, they do kind of tie together, so let's see if we can articulate them well. Uh, the, the first thought would be this. What area in your life are you holding back from surrendering to God? Maybe it's a, a, a habit of yours. Maybe it's um, a thinking pattern. Maybe it's uh, some certain hobby or some uh, secret area of your life that you're saying, no, God, you can have everything except for this area. What area of your life are you holding back from the Lord? And then that would kind of go into the second thought, which is this. Uh, what area of your life 
are you saying to God, no, you can't? Not, is it, not only is it, no, you can't have this, but it's just, God, I don't, I don't know if I believe that you can really do that. When I look at Joshua and Caleb, they were two men that said, God, we believe that you can. And we, by faith, are going to believe in the miracle working power of God. I think about Joshua on the day the sun stood still. He prayed, God, help the sun not to move. That was an impossible task, but he knew God could do it. Caleb and Joshua in spying out the land, it's an impossible task that we would take this land, but we believe God can do it. You know, there's a lot of areas of our life where we simply say, God, I don't believe you can. You, you can't work here. God, you can't help my marriage. God, you can't help my kids. God, you can't help my fam family or friend. God, you can't alleviate that pressure. God, you can't. And we tell God what he can't do. I think sometimes that is rooted in the fact that we have areas of our life that we tell God he can't have. So today I want to encourage you. Would you ask the Lord, God, show me any area of my life where I'm not surrendered. And God, would you show me an area of my life where I'm saying, God, you can't do that. Today, let's choose. Surrender every area and trust that God can. We will see you tomorrow as we pick up in chapter 19 and 20 and look forward to our time together. Have a great day.